So today we're interviewing a number of founders from across Fifth Wall's very diverse portfolio about a number of the challenges and obstacles they faced in building their companies. So today we're talking about isolation. And one of the things I think any entrepreneur knows is that when you're building a company for the first time, when you're blazing your own trail, you can feel very alone and oftentimes without any peers. As a founder of companies myself, I have felt very alone. But what I wanted to hear from our founders is how they coped with that loneliness. When, you, when you're a solo founder, it's, yeah, there's like a lot of loneliness, <laughs> a lot of alone time. Um, Cause it's just, I don't like, you know, it's a unique, it's a unique experience. It's very hard for people to relate. And it's also, you also feel like inappropriate springing those woes on other people, you know, cause like it, it, it always, they always seem like they're, those are elegant problems to have, but you know, they're still, they're still real problems. Yeah. So this is my third time being on the founding team of a company or being a founder. Um, and uh, I'm a sole founder this time. There are certainly moments when you feel like there are decisions you have to make as a founder, uh, where it's, it's hard to share the decisions with even a leadership team, right? Um, there have been moments either in this company or in the past where we've got an acquisition offer and it's a pretty interesting acquisition offer. It's worth considering, but not one that I'm prepared to talk about at the board yet or not one I'm prepared to talk about the leadership team yet. Um, another example is when you're making an evaluation on competing term sheets. It's, it's a bit of a lonely journey until, until you're ready to actually have a quantitative dialogue with the board members, right? Um, so yeah, certainly there have been a couple of times in the last few years. Yeah, um, you know, I think that um, loneliness as a founder is a topic that is not discussed often enough um, and, and definitely a struggle. Um, I, I remember two times in particular that, that were hard. When I started my first company back in Spain, 20, when I was 22, uh, we were truly the first true startup in the country ever. Um, so when I told people around me, like my college professors, that I was going to be starting these websites where you could meet friends, uh, the reaction of everyone was like, what are you doing with your life? Like you're this bright student and you are going to be raising money for a website with people's pictures. That sounds really sketchy. At some point that draws on you because uh, as we both know, in the entrepreneurial journey, you are failing more often than you are succeeding. And for the first year and a half, not only it felt like we were failing, but we didn't have anyone to talk about our failure, our perceived failure. Um, and it was very hard. I felt very isolated. Uh, as a result, I was not uh, forthcoming about how I was feeling with most people around me and that made me feel even more isolated. Uh, so I've been in this thing called YPO, Young Presidents Organization, for, for like eight years now. It turns out it's actually my sixth company that I've run. And I would say prior, so for those who aren't familiar with YPO, it's this thing where you have all CEOs that you have this thing called Forum, where it's like other peers, your, your other fellow CEOs of different companies. And it's set up that way because it can it can be very isolating you know it's, it's lonely at the top kind of the thing you've, you've heard about and so before ypo when i was running companies i would feel very lonely and isolated so these feelings aren't unique to solo founders many companies are founded by multiple people i've had co-founders and i have still had these same feelings and so what i wanted to delve into is how you cope with these feelings even when you're building something with a peer with a co-founder one thing I was very fortunate to have at Blend was we had three other co-founders who worked very closely with me <clears throat> during the growth of the business and, and creating the business and creating the first product, rolling out the first product. But then over the years, uh, the founder in over an almost a decade old business, over the years, the founders went from four to three to two to one in terms of be still being involved in the day-to-day -day of the business. And then suddenly these like, these like thought partners, these people that you, you know, sort of birthed this business from, uh, they disappear and not because of anything that's wrong with them or anything to do with the business. Just, it just becomes time after five, six, seven, eight, nine years. 
And then I just remember waking up one day and it was the first day at the office where I was the only founder left at the company. And it was like, wow, now I gotta basically go it alone. I have a couple of co-founders who were instrumental in helping get the company started. Um, one of them left about six months into building the company, which was a moment of incredible loneliness. I didn't even know it was possible for co-founders to leave. I just thought we're all stuck together doing this for life. Um, and so that was truly a moment of despair. I had a four week old infant at the time. I do not cry at work often, but just sobbing and saying like, how am I ever gonna do this without you? I couldn't find a single example of somebody else who had a baby uh, while they were series A fundraising. I only started a company with, with a co-founder. So it was two of us. So I never started the company as a solo founder. Um, so for me, that's what I know and that's what I've lived in. My, my co-founder actually had an accident and he's okay now, uh, but um, you know, everything's going great. And then one day he was in the hospital and, um, and my, of course my first um, thing was, you know, is he okay? Is he gonna be okay? You know, how to take care of the family? But at that point, you know, all of a sudden, everything was with you just by yourself since his accident. Um, you know, he's more on the board and less than more in the day-to-day -day operations. So I've been operating as a solo founder from that point on, but thankfully a couple of early employees of, um, you know, we have founding members of the team who have truly played the role for the co-founder. So typically I think co-founders do best when you have split up the responsibilities pretty well. But the great thing about having a co-founder is it doesn't mean you can't talk to your co-founder about the things that you're in charge of. And that definitely helps counter any feelings of loneliness you might have, because that's someone who's really in it with you, even though you're trying to work on different things for the company. So I'm very grateful to have a great co-founder um, and we've been partnered together for over eight years. When something is happening to me for the first time, it's also typically happening to him for the first time as well. So that's why it's great to have other people to call who have had these experiences before, have seen in, in a similar situation, and it's not always necessarily going to be your co-founder, um, but the co-founder having him around can really help with the feelings of loneliness. So how do you deal with these feelings of loneliness? And one of the most consistent answers seemed to be talk to other founders, other founders, other founders, other founders, other co-founders who have experienced the same thing. Well, it seems really obvious to say, yeah, go talk to other founders. There's a difference between talking to other founders and pretending everything is great and that you're going to get through it and being willing to sit down with another founder who's probably a lot more successful than you and say, hey, I wake up every morning feeling really sick because I'm terrified about how to build this business. You will go to a bar in San Francisco on a Friday night uh, trying to decompress and you will still be talking about startups and venture capital and people will be asking you about your daily average user numbers uh, and you couldn't escape it uh, and in a place where I was surrounded by founders, I still felt very isolated. It's pretty incredible when you're willing to open up to somebody like that, that they'll open up back. And that's the beginning of making all of it tolerable. I remember an early conversation with another entrepreneur um, many months into building the company where I was describing to her this feeling of, I can't breathe. Like my lungs feel tight, my chest feels tight all the time. Like, is that normal? And she laughed and she was like, that is exactly how I felt for two years. So I've, I've grown to build a small network of, of uh, CEOs or founders that are in a similar place or stage of company as Span is today. And that's proven to be incredibly valuable. If you seek out people who are in the same position as you, then that's the best way you can be honest with them and vice versa. And that makes you feel, it makes you feel less lonely to know that other people in your same role are going through a, you know, a similar set of challenges. So aside from a co-founder or other founders, leaning on friends and family that aren't invested in your business but care about you as a person can also be really helpful in coping with some of these feelings you get in building a business. I've been very lucky as a founder in the sense that I've rarely ever felt lonely because I've very purposely surrounded myself with people I can pick up the phone and call whenever I'm having a problem that would ordinarily make someone feel pretty lonely. The first people I would lean on for advice are, you know, sealed board members, investors, and my co-founder and our leadership team. But sometimes it also really helps to have people 
who you can call who have no skin in the game whatsoever. People who are friends, they're founders and CEOs of other companies, they're investors in other companies, and they're not invested in your success or failure. And sometimes those are the best people to call as well. Um, I would say family has been a huge support in many moments. Um, you know, even, you know, I'll call my dad on some issues and just, just, just get his perspective. And, um, and that's been helpful. Uh, friends, uh, fellow CEOs, you know, so I would say that it's really critical as you scale the company to scale your networks and to build almost like infrastructure around you uh, in a way that's um, you may not need it all the time, but when you need it, I think it's important to have it. The tendency in these situations is to kind of go into your own cocoon. Um, and I think just asking for help and just being out there, meeting people, uh, almost like what you don't want to do, but if you do it, I think it typically leads to a breakthrough. You know, you can't solve all the problems by yourself. And the biggest thing you gotta go do is to actually put yourself out there and ask for help, you know, and uh, it's pretty extraordinary how many people step up. Our founding members, some of the early employees just stepped up and really filled not only the need of the business, but also uh, my emotional need at that point, uh, which I think is something that I was grateful for. Other founders that are friends first, founders second. So I can actually take the phone uh, and tell you, hey, I know that everything looks uh, rosy, but I feel very down and here's why. Uh, and I have that with, with two or three other friends uh, and it's so much better because all that anxiety goes somewhere and it is better to share it with friends than with team members or with yourself. So starting a company is lonely. Anyone that tells you differently hasn't started a company. But the good news is there are ways to deal with this. There are ways to cope with this. There are ways to get support. And I think that's one of the things every founder out there should seek out actively and is so important to do when you're building something new for the first time. So if you like this, subscribe to our channel, comment, let people know what you think about what it's like to be an entrepreneur, what companies you're thinking of starting, what you're struggling with and encourage others to share in this wealth of knowledge around what it means to be an entrepreneur and the struggles that every entrepreneur goes through.